If you enjoy this video, please consider giving a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you have any ideas for future videos, share them in the comments section below. This original bedtime story is made possible thanks to Slumberland patrons. If you would like to support this channel, you can find Patreon details in the description and on my channel homepage. So just take a moment to allow your eyes to close and allow yourself to begin to relax. And as you begin to comfortably drift asleep, I'm just going to tell this sleep story in the background. While I tell this sleep story, I don't know whether you'll drift asleep faster to the sound of my voice or whether it'll be to the spaces between my words. And as you gradually drift and float so peacefully asleep, I'm just going to tell the story of Chloe. And Chloe is the child of an emperor. And every day she receives her lessons through private tuition in her palace. And she looks out from the palace. And she can see off in the distance beyond the palace walls. The nearby town. She spies children playing, seeming to have so much fun together. While she just sits here in the palace, learning in these lessons. And she's taught about how the earth sits like a plate on the back of a giant turtle, surrounded by the points of light in the sky. And that the gods live among those points of light, beyond those points of light. And she's taught about the moon and the sun and how they orbit in a circle around the dinner plate earth and the turtle which the earth is balancing on. And she's taught that sometimes the turtle stumbles, creating rumbles through the earth. Sometimes the gods are powering things up or powering things down, creating electricity and explosions in the sky. But deep down, Chloe wants to figure this all out for herself, because when she asks, if the earth is resting on the back of a turtle, what is the turtle resting on? What is the turtle standing on? Is it walking with the earth on its back? Does it just stand there with the earth on its back? Has anybody ever travelled to the edge of the earth to look over the edge and see what the turtle looks like and what the turtle's standing on? And Chloe is always told that their questions people don't ask and don't need to know. That you can't go to the edge because it's sealed. That there's ice all around the edge. And then the night sky 
wraps around that. Almost like points of diamonds in black velvet. Sometimes the diamonds fall from the sky and you see them streak down towards the earth. And Chloe asks if anyone has ever been to the moon or the sun. And her teacher explains that the sun is too hot. It's the giver of life. Gives the heat that makes life possible. And that the moon is too cold for anyone to go to. And growing up, Chloe keeps this in mind, her learnings as a child. And as she gets older and older, so times change. Her emperor father is no longer emperor. The way society is organized changes. And there's this sudden explosion of knowledge, of a deep desire for understanding. And one day, while Chloe, who is now an adult, is out walking in the woods near to where she lives, she sees a curious toadstool growing out of a fallen down tree. She heads over to that toadstool and as she gets near, so she sees a fairy fly up from behind the toadstool. And the fairy lands on the top of the toadstool. And Chloe finds this a curious experience. And she leans in to ask the fairy who they are. She'd never seen fairies before. And the fairy explained that they're a fairy. And that they want to grant Chloe a wish. that they've got the ability to read minds, to feel the feelings of others. And they know that her biggest wish is to be able to go to space, to be able to go to the moon and look back and see what the earth looks like. See what that turtle looks like to see what the turtle seems to be standing on, whether the turtle is walking or stationary. And so the fairy grants a wish and says that you're going to have some understandings over the coming years that will let you know how to reach the moon. And fortuitously, you'll fall into situations that allow you to follow that dream, to share your knowledge, and to be one of the first people to walk on the moon. And the fairy then waves her wand with sparkles coming from the end and twinkling sounds like thousands of gentle bells. And sparkling dust surrounds Chloe.
and as the sparkling dust fades, so Chloe notices that the fairy seems to have gone, as does the toadstool, and she's unsure what the experience was that she had just had. She carries on exploring in the woods. And many months later, while Chloe is watching a firework display with some friends of hers, and she's watching the fireworks go up in the sky, explode into different colours of sparkling light, she wonders whether something similar could get a person into space. Could you go into space using something like a firework? Some of the fireworks go up really high before exploding. And so she started to draw and write and work out how big a firework would have to be. to get someone all the way into space. And she worked out that although it's very difficult, it could be done. And she wondered to herself, what would space be like? She knows that when she hears of people climbing mountains, they talk about it being harder to breathe about it being very cold. About bottles of liquid that they have on them expanding and sometimes breaking the bottle. And so she wonders what kind of clothing you would take to space. and drifting into her own world, in her own mind, she designs some clothing that would protect her entirely from the elements, deciding that the best clothing to take to space would be almost like some clothing which is everything that you would need to survive all built in and enclosed within that clothing. So if you needed to breathe, you've got your air with you. If you needed it to be warm, you've got it warm against the cold. She designed something that protect against a reduction in pressure. And over many years, she had worked out in her notepads how you could get to space, how you could get to the moon, and how you could stay there for a while, keeping comfortable. And then one day, she had a fortuitous meeting She encountered someone in a small spring garden. She was sat on a bench in this garden, her eyes closed, listening to the spring birds, the rustling leaves, enjoying the scent of the flowers. when someone came and sat down beside her. And her eyes were closed, and she could sense they'd sat down beside her. And they were talking softly and friendly. They were talking about how much they enjoyed this spring garden. The warmth of the sun on the face the sounds of the birds, 
the smells of the flowers, the gentle rustling of the leaves, and conversation between the two of them as the day continued on, turned to talk of space. And this person talked about their interest of space, how they'd always wondered whether you could be up there looking back here, and what it is you would see. How they've always wanted to see if they could see the turtle that holds up the earth. They'd always been curious about what the turtle is standing on. Is the turtle standing on another earth or something else? And between them, they started to gather the resources to make this dream of Chloe's a reality. They talked about how they were going to create a bridge to the stars. And they'd worked out as the years continued on. And Chloe was now much, much older. That the best way to get to the stars was to initially use balloons. That balloons would lift a giant rocket, a bit like a giant firework, and the balloons would raise that firework up higher and higher and higher. And as the balloons got higher and higher, so they would expand. And just before they reached the point where they would pop, the rocket would be able to fire in the direction of the moon, launching that rocket from under the balloons up into space towards the moon. And no one had ever sent anything into space before. This was going to be a first. And then, on the day of the rocket going to space, Chloe and a small team that had been gathered together decided they were going to be the first to try this out. And Chloe boarded the front of the rocket. And giant balloons were inflated. And the rocket gently started to rise from the earth, lifting higher and higher off the planet, as those balloons got larger and larger, expanding more and more as they rose up into the sky. And Chloe and two other astronauts sat in Chloe's designed space outfits looked out of the windows as the earth expanded beneath them and they slowly and carefully rose higher and higher they could see the balloons getting larger and larger filling their field of view above them they could see a timer counting down. And exactly when the timer hit zero, they needed to punch the button that released the balloons and triggered the rocket to fire the rest of the journey. And as they got higher and higher, so that countdown continued and they could see 
the sky was changing from blue to black. And then the countdown reached zero. Chloe punched the button and could instantly hear a deep rumble from behind them and could feel themselves pushed back in the chairs as the rocket accelerated, releasing from the balloons, heading up out of the blueness of the sky into the blackness of the night and then on to the silvery glow of the moon. And after a while, the rocket seemed to become still and silent. But Chloe knew that the engine was still burning. And then everything calmed. They got the message that they were in space. And that they're at a speed that allows them to make it to the moon. And the rocket continued on towards the moon. With the moon getting larger and larger in view. And Chloe really wanted to be able to look back towards the earth. But there were no windows facing back towards the earth. All they could see was the moon getting larger and larger in the field of view. And after a long time of travelling towards the moon, The rocket went into orbit around the moon automatically. And a part of the rocket that they were in separated from the rest of the rocket that had been designed to just continue to circle around the moon. And the part that separated was going to lower down to the moon's surface. They would steer it to the landing space. They would land. And it had the ability to fire back off the moon with enough energy to get it into orbit. And they had some thrusters that would allow them to maneuver to match the speed of the rest of the rocket. To manoeuvre in front of the rest of the rocket. To slow down slightly, allowing the rest of the rocket to catch up. And then carefully reconnect with the rest of the rocket for the return trip back to Earth. And as they detached and descended to the moon's surface, they could see the surface of the earth. They landed on the moon. They exited the lander. They were surprised at the weightlessness, how springy everything seemed, almost like walking on a trampoline, only feeling weightless, a bit like a trampoline underwater. They could see the tip of the earth, beginning to rise on the moon's horizon. 
they were surprised how small the earth looked all the way over there. And as the earth began to rise in the sky from the moon, Chloe and the others were surprised to see that the turtle under the earth seemed to be standing on the back of another turtle. And it seemed to be turtles all the way down, as far as she could see. And the turtle looked so ancient, as did the one beneath that one and the one beneath that one. She noticed the moon just seemed to circle overhead. But from here she could notice the way the moon was orbiting above the planet. And as she looked the opposite direction to the earth, she could see the night sky almost like an orb of diamonds. But it seemed to be a sphere that surrounded the earth, the moon, the sun. And in the direction of underneath the earth, it seemed like the stars went on further, probably, than even the lowest down turtle. That as far as she could see, the turtles faded into being so far away she couldn't even see them anymore, and yet, she could see that there were stars in that direction. So she still wondered what the bottom turtle was stood on. And how the universe works. And after this curious experience, and walking on the moon for a while, kicking up some of that moon dust, having everything seem almost like it was moving in slow motion. She could see that ice wall around the earth protecting the planet, holding all the water in, and she could see that it would be possible to climb the ice wall, to traverse that ice wall to the edge, and perhaps see over the edge to that turtle. She wondered whether it would be possible to hang down or drop off the edge of the earth, down in front of the turtle, to try and hold a conversation with the turtle, see if the turtle can explain anything about where they came from, about reality. And it had taken her decades to reach the point where she is now in space. So she felt that perhaps that's something that she can start, but will have to be finished with a future generation to learn more about this land she lives on. And they head back to the capsule, launch back off into orbit, use the thrusters to match the speed of the rest of the spacecraft, 
to maneuver in front of the spacecraft, to then gently slow down ever so slightly, to allow the spacecraft to very slowly catch up with the lander, and then carefully docking with the rest of the spacecraft. before using the thrusters to leave the orbit of the moon and to make the journey back to Earth. And most of the journey is quiet and calm and peaceful and everything seems to move almost in slow motion. And then, as they arrive back at the planet, they can feel the sudden jolt, rumbling, vibrating, of entering the Earth's atmosphere, the atmosphere getting thicker and thicker, as they travel down towards the surface. And as they near the surface, so parachutes fire from the ship, slowing the ship further, then bigger parachutes fire, slowing the ship further still, and beginning to move the ship so it's vertical. And carefully lowering that vertical ship down slowly to the earth before landing with the most gentle thud on the earth's surface. And after her experience, Chloe writes about what she saw shares in interviews about what she saw, shows photographs taken from space. Of the turtles going all the way down, and is frustrated when she finds herself challenged by people saying that they think the earth is a globe, that the earth is like a ball in space, and that the photos are fake, there aren't really turtles all the way down, beneath a dinner plate earth, and she finds herself having to constantly justify that her photos weren't fake, that she had been to space, she had been to the moon, she had seen those turtles, and that when someone makes a trip to the edge of the earth, they'll see for themselves. And people keep telling her that it's all fake. There is no edge of the earth with an ice wall. If you go to the ice wall, ascend the ice wall and travel across the ice wall. The earth is a globe and you're just going to come out on the other side of the earth. That you'll head to the south and then if you keep crossing that ice, you'll find yourself heading back to the north again. But Chloe knows what she's seen with her own eyes, that she's been to space, she's landed on the moon, and she has taken the photographs of that dinner plate earth rising over the moon horizon, being able to look down and see 
turtles all the way down. And she works on her next mission, on planning how she's going to go to the ice wall, cross the ice wall, and descend beyond the ice wall to try to communicate with the turtle that's just beneath the earth. And she doesn't know if that'll be achieved in her lifetime or in the next generation, but she's going to do all her planning for it. And every night, she drifts and floats peacefully asleep, dreaming about her plans for the future, excited by her future plans, looking forward to waking up refreshed each day. As she drifts and floats peacefully and relaxed, asleep, 